Next on Worcester News tonight, two banks investigating identity theft after customers report having their debit card and credit card information stolen. Plus, family and friends pay tribute to Vanessa Marcotte as the investigation into her murder continues. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Andy Madison. Today, family and friends gathered in Fitchburg to pay their respects to Vanessa Marcotte. Investigators were again on scene in nearby Princeton today, where the 27-year-old's body was found last week in the woods near her mother's house. A wake was held for Marcotte earlier today in Fitchburg. Marcotte, a Lemonster native, went to Bancroft High School and recently worked for Google in New York City. Today's wake was well attended. There was even a bus full of people who came up from New York City to attend. State of police now say they've received more than 600 calls on an, an anonymous tip line. Authorities are still searching for Vanessa Marcotte's killer. Her investigation enters its second week. Today, criminal experts are weighing in and offering their opinion on what type of person could have done this. Our Brittany Schaefer sat down with some experts. This person definitely um, seems to have had an agenda. Criminal justice professionals say the murder of Vanessa Marcotte is unusual. Burning of a body is, is unique. You don't see it a whole lot. Um, you know, in, in murders. William Castro served as a police officer for more than 30 years. The Becker College professor of criminal justice says burning a body will delay identification, destroy evidence, and could give pleasure to the killer. If you look at, at the depravity of just the act of, of burning a victim, it may indicate that this perpetrator is, is a psychopath, has psychopathic uh, tendencies where he's got no regard for others and he's got no conscience. They want to dehumanize her in some way, um, punish her in some way. Castro says another strange fact is Marcotte was apparently murdered during the day. This occurred late afternoon, and that's unusual in and of itself. Both criminal justice experts believe the killer has committed crimes before and most likely did not know Marcotte. This does look like somebody was prepared, you know, um, it's for the crime they committed, which could suggest that they've done it before. And it was a perfect storm where it was the location, it was her, she was alone, it was secluded, wooded area. Uh, to me, it would be indicative that, that they did not know each other. Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. Two banks in Worcester County are hit by criminals who may have obtained debit card information from customers by skimming them from ATM machines. Police say it happened at two banks in Webster, and the debit cards were used this past weekend. Our Catherine Andrioli reports. Swiping your card at the wrong ATM could cost you, as it did for some here in central Massachusetts over the weekend. Apparently it's so easy for criminals to do this sort of thing to individuals and then boom, you're out of a few hundred bucks or thousands of dollars potentially. An investigation is underway after Webster police say they uncovered a skimming device like this one at two different banks. We're notified over the weekend from our fraud monitoring system that there's been some fraudulent activity primarily at ATMs in New York and um, Boston area. Police say the skimming device was placed in this ATM here at Webster 5. And when people swiped their cards, they found thousands of dollars were fraudulently withdrawn from their accounts. Data breaches on card skimmers are on the rise as criminals are finding newer and easier ways to steal your personal bank information. We've had a, a friend of ours that uh, she's a branch manager at one of her banks and that happened there. This gas station in Westboro faced a similar incident back in April when police discovered a credit card skimming device was found in a pump. We spoke with one man who says banks should be more responsible with inspecting their devices. It'd be nice to be able to see the banks that they can somehow do something that would actually prevent this sort of thing from even being possible to put an device, uh, attach a device on there, really. Police say to inspect an ATM card reader and make sure it has not been tampered with before you swipe your card. And always be sure to check your account. In Webster, Catherine Andrioli, Worcester News Tonight. A Connecticut company plans to acquire Providence and Worcester Railroad. Genesee and Wyoming Inc. announced today they plan to acquire the railroad company for $126 million. The transaction is expected to be completed at the end of the year. In a statement, President and CEO Jack Hellman said, quote, 
We are pleased to welcome P&W's employees to G&W as we work together to provide safe, reliable, and efficient rail service to our customers for the long term. We also look forward to working with our Class 1 partners, Amtrak and Metro North Commuter Railroad, to ensure a smooth transition of services and build upon the success of P&W's current operations. A Northbridge family is collecting supplies for the military in honor of one of their own. For the next two weeks, student Dan Hunter Dancero is collecting soap, microwavable meals, and anything anyone wants to send to our servicemen and women fighting overseas. He's doing this as part of Project 351 and also in honor of Corporal John Dawson, who was killed while serving in Afghanistan last year. He was a fallen soldier at 22 in Afghanistan. And my family actually knows his family, so I think it's pretty cool that I'm helping out his family by giving out his name and just uh, show my respect for John Dawson. Dancero is, has some help in Northbridge. The Valley Pub is one place people can drop off items for the collection. Northbridge Police Department also posted the information on their Facebook page. Well, the hot summer months are starting to come to an end, but for some central Massachusetts towns, the heat the past few weeks has contributed to West Nile virus in mosquitoes. First finding was in Worc Worcester in July. Now Auburn and Grafton are among the towns where mosquitoes have tested positive. Our Olivia Lemon has the story. So it is concerning because I have a little one who likes to be outside all the time. Mosquitoes testing positive for West Nile virus in Auburn and Grafton is alarming for some. But experts at Central Massachusetts Mosquito Control Project say there is no need to panic. It is something that unfortunately does tend to occur um, during some summers. Executive Director Tim Deschamps says the long stretch of heat and little rain this summer is increasing the population of mosquitoes who carry the West Nile virus. Deschamps says mosquitoes are typically attracted to still water and without a lot of rain, these areas are not flushed frequently. So what water does exist gets very high in bacterial content, which is a favorite habitat for um, some of these species that can carry West Nile virus. We want residents to be aware of their surroundings, um, be aware that West Nile is in the area. The town of Auburn works directly with Central Mass Mosquito Control Project. Health Director Darlene Coyle says the virus was detected Wednesday and crews were out the next day to spray the area. So within 24 hours we had, um, you know, received the news and been able to take some steps to be able to get them out. Residents are urged to wear insect repellent and protective clothing. Deschamps also encourages people to check around their homes to make sure they have no containers with standing water. If you do dump them out, drain them, dispose of them if you can. We're using extra bug repellent. Uh, we're going in fairly early, like by 7 o'clock, so we're not out with the mosquitoes. Olivia Lemon, Worcester News Tonight. A Worcester man accused of stabbing another man in the city over the weekend. Police say Leandro Rodriguez was arguing with a woman in the area of Chandler and Queen Street on Saturday and then stabbed a man sitting in a wheelchair. The 66-year-old victim was taken to the hospital and treated for non-life-threatening injuries. A Massachusetts man is being held on $75,000 bond in connection with a fatal accident in Connecticut a year ago. 21-year-old Omar Velez turned himself into police last week. He is accused of colliding with a motorcycle at the intersection of Dresser Hill Road and Route 197 in Thompson, Connecticut last September. 50-year-old Penny Woodbury was killed in that crash. Velez is charged with negligent homicide with a motor vehicle, possession of marijuana, and failure to obey a stop sign. The murder trial for Howard Penn will get underway tomorrow. Penn is facing a first-degree murder charge in connection to the death of Lloyd Worcester. He is accused of shooting and killing Worcester during a fight at a rooming house in the city in 2014. His lawyer says he shot Worcester in self-defense. Telegram says jurors will get to see surveillance video of the fight and the shooting. In other news, a big honor for a local Worcester band overseas. They perform every year in the city's St. Patrick's Parade. The Worcester Kilty Band took home some international hardware. The group was awarded Best Drum Corps in the Grade 3A World Pipe Band Championships in Scotland. 
Pipe major David Methven accepted the world championship 